Explorers, Brian here, your guide in our journey around the globe. Hernandez de Cordoba left Havana with several hundred men, looking, as all conquistadores were, to find something of value, no matter the cost, and claim it for Spain. De Cordoba and his party landed on a southern peninsula in present-day Mexico, ran into some locals, and asked where they were. The response sounded like the word Yucatan. Therefore, de Cordoba and the others believed they had reached the land of Yucatan. Later, after the conquistadores started to record their exploits, they discovered the word they heard as Yucatan was actually a phrase meaning, I don't understand you. <laughs> Later on, another interpretation was that they said, we speak to you. Still, another interpretation was, our home. This story demonstrates the differences between cultures and how incredible, strange, tragic, and even comical events can occur when cultures collide. Let's look at some critical components of culture today and how they mesh together to create a rich tapestry of human experience. Our learning goals are to analyze human populations and their diverse cultures by identifying cultural hearths and connecting cultural hearths to modern cultural traits such as language, religion, cultural landscapes, and social organization. Ready, explorers? The official definition of culture is all the ways of life of a population, including their beliefs, behaviors, and institutions that are passed down from generation to generation. It might be simpler to think of it like this. Practically anything that humans say, do, think, discuss, write, read, eat, protest, love, pray to, meditate upon, turn away from, or live up to can be considered a part of culture, and that just scratches the surface. Let's begin our journey to learn about culture by describing a few of our own traits. In your lesson guide, describe a belief and a behavior that are common in your community. Maybe you said that in your town, people believe that pizza should be deep dish and they eat it with a fork. Or maybe, because of where you're from, that sounds horrifying. The things we could look at, even between two cities like New York and Chicago, could take us years to comb through. We just don't have time to do a deep dive on every cultural group in every country this year. But we can talk about a few key indicators of culture that will help us understand the people we will encounter in our trip around the world. Let's start by taking it back to our humble beginnings the cultural hearth. You may be somewhat familiar with the word hearth through a commonly used phrase like hearth and home. Most people assume that a hearth is a fireplace or an oven. But for many peoples, like the ancient Greeks, a hearth was considered the center of the home, the focus of all family activity. This was where kids were taught and where stories were told. A cultural hearth is where people gather and express themselves, a place where their culture lives and breathes freely, a point from which it spreads, much like warmth spreads from a fire. Most of the earliest cultural hearths are places where agriculture first developed. They are widely recognized as river valleys along the Nile, Indus, Yellow, Ganges, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, Central and South America, and West Africa. Within each of these areas, civilizations emerged. They developed language, religion, laws, skills, and origin stories, which still influence us today. So what drove the development of these hearths? As larger groups of people lived together, they standardized certain things, like farming to feed everyone. Standard rules and systems allowed humans to live and work together, and these rules were passed on to later generations. As settlements grew, they encountered new problems, like the effects of floods. They studied storms and seasons and marked the passage of time. Religious practices, philosophical ideas, and methods of measuring goods and services came next. As time went on, these beliefs, 
behaviors, and institutions were spread to new peoples through travel, trade, and war in a process called cultural diffusion. Show what you know about hearths and diffusion in your lesson guide. In your own words, what is a cultural hearth? What is cultural diffusion and how does it relate to a cultural hearth? One of the most important cultural features that a geographer can look for is language. Without knowing the local dialect, De Cordoba ended up naming an entire peninsula something that may have meant, I don't understand you. <laughs> Not knowing a language isn't just a lack of understanding of the literal meaning of words, it's also a matter of context. People learning English as a second language often struggle with common phrases like break a leg or a piece of cake. But in the same way, American English speakers wouldn't understand an Australian phrase like What's a John Dory? or He's having a rip snorter. Regional differences often reflect the experience of living in a particular place. In Finnish, there are over 40 words for snow and each has a distinct meaning. Language can also reflect a powerful connection to the past. In most languages, the word for war means conflict, but in Sanskrit it translates to a desire for more cows, because it's from a time in which most people were herders, and that's what they fought over. Let's reflect on the context embedded in our words. List a local phrase that you use frequently. What is the meaning of that phrase? Maybe you said that asking someone to ballpark it means to estimate an amount of something. Other cultural indicators are the ideas of faith and religion. What happens to people after they die and how should we treat others are questions that every population has its own answers for. Answers which, like language, derive from living in a particular society. 5.3 of the world's 8 billion people are followers of either Christianity, Islam, or Hinduism. But people of many faiths hold similar values of common decency, treating others with respect, and helping those in need. So even people of different religious traditions can have somewhat of a cultural understanding through these teachings. Religion can be a powerful motivator for providing aid to communities throughout the world, but can also provide an unyielding ideology, leading to acts of violence. As we look at followers of major religions around the world in later units, pay attention to the powerful influence of faith and religious practice in place and space. Another indicator of culture can be seen in the landscape. What culturally important concept is on display in these images? Whether as a tribute to an important icon, a monument of faith, or a piece of land sown with crops all convey a sense of cultural landscape in their usage. When considering cultural landscapes, the geographer should always ask what culturally important idea is being conveyed. What about your community? Pause the video here and name an important item on display in your town. How does it represent the local culture? Social organization can also help the geographer to learn about latent prejudice through institutionalized otherness in a society. This photo shows separate places for people of African descent to use the bathroom and get a drink of water in the American South in 1939. In this and thousands of other shops, schools, and buses around the United States, the cultural landscape demonstrated legally mandated segregation, which was legal until the late 1960s, and we can still see its effects today. Cultural monuments can also be indicators of changing cultural opinion. This monument, a statue of Robert E. Lee, dedicated in 1890, stood in the middle of Richmond as a symbol of the Confederacy. After protesters covered the statue in graffiti in 2020, the governor ordered the monument removed. Its removal is a powerful indicator of changing attitudes about social organization. Culture is the big idea when studying people. Why do people act the way they do? What beliefs characterize a community? 
How do people represent their culture in physical space? And what can we learn from the way people in a community organize themselves? These are just a few questions you can ask to help make the world around you come alive. Remember to ask questions, be curious, and until next time, keep exploring. Hey, hey.